Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome to Tenerife where I'm here to ride this Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. So I've hired this bike today from a place called Easy Rider in Tenerife. This is just one of the amazing collection they've got. Let's check out some of their bikes they have for rental. So the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, what is it? It's a naked, modern, retro, classic looking, based on the 1960s original bike. These bikes are under six grand, but are they any good? So today I'm going to do a bit of a nuts and bolts review. So sit back, relax and come along for the ride. So we've got an air-cooled 648cc parallel twin engine producing 47 brake horsepower and 52 newton meters of torque. So on the front brake, we've got a two-piston caliper and a 320 mil disc with ABS. So on the rear brake, we've got a single piston floating caliper with a 240 mil disc and also ABS. So this bike's completely standard. We've got twin shocks on the rear, which is just preload adjustable only. And on the front, We've got stop non-adjustable suspension on the front. We've got 18 inch wheels, front and rear. So on the rear tire, we've got a Pirelli Sports Demon. The tire size is 130 by 70 by 18. And on the front, we've got 100 by 90 by 18. So this bike's weighing in at 202 kilos. I'm five foot nine, the seat height's 804 millimeters, and I've got my feet flat on the ground. 13.7 litre tank should do around 150 to 180 miles. And if you want to know about the electronics, then don't worry, it ain't got any. For the stock exhaust, these sound nice. Right, let's go ride the Tenerife Mountains or the Tenerife Volcano El Tade. Um God, it's so hot today. I think they've gave out the best part of 30 degrees uh, just when we stopped and did a bit of bit of filming back there. Uh, yeah, the temperature soon uh, shoots up, but beautiful to get moving on the bike, uh, get a bit of airflow into these uh, air jackets we're wearing today. Um, so yeah, this is the first time I've actually ridden a, a Royal Enfield and already as we're, uh, we're kind of getting into these uh, quite fairly tight turns. Initially when you, uh, you get on it, your legs are a bit of a akimbo sort of sticking out a little bit and um, you kind of knees are, knees are going in but uh, your feet are sort of pointed out slight ways. That just takes a, a little bit of a, a bit of a weird riding position compared to what I'm used to do. I'm really liking this classic 60s look, uh, obviously with the, the modern technology. Is there a place in the market for an analog bike in a digital world? And the answer to that is yes. It's nice not to have all these electronics to worry about. I mean, this is actually one of the biggest selling bikes worldwide. I mean, you really do have to take your time on these mountain roads. Um, the good thing about this bike is it doesn't encourage you to ride fast. Um, I thought it might be a little bit underpowered to be honest compared to what I'm, I'm used to riding and, and uh, on paper it is but actually the reality it is the bike is more than enough to, to handle this. I mean remember I've got a pillion on the back and um, 
this bike is not struggling at all if i open it up it soon pulls away i mean so far so good um i think there probably is improvements that can be made to this bike oh, i mean just look at these roads they're fantastic who would not want to come out here to come and ride this so yeah one thing i did notice when we've just stopped and had a little drink there is uh when i got on the bike i had to kind of like just sit on it and uh move backwards and you do catch your feet on the pegs so um but that's not really an issue you know i could have just got off the bike and actually just uh pushed it back um so them them foot pegs do do stick out a bit um i do feel like at my height um i fit the bike really well i'm not sure if i was uh, gonna be kind of i don't know over six foot whether um that'd be a, a, a bit of an issue but um like i said i i've kind of fitted onto the bike really um really impressed with the riding position i guess the one thing when you get on the bike you haven't got to worry about any settings so because there's no electronics on this bike you can just jump on it and ride it you know you don't you don't just sort of like have to mess around with things and it's pretty straightforward and i think um you can just jump on the bike and go ride there's a few bikers a few sports bike riders so i've ridden out in tenerife quite a few times and i've ridden everything from the big adventure tourers i've hired a uh, a Honda Africa Twin which was a, a fairly new bike and um, they become I think personally really hard work especially on these roads where there's a lot of tight twists and um, you, you're kind of using the power on the bike all the time and you're riding quicker than I think you sometimes you feel comfortable at I'm actually really enjoying riding this right let's go for an overtake and open this baby up! We're going full throttle up the hill! And like I say, there's no, there's no power loss there. So as we're starting to gain altitude, you can feel the temperature just starting to drop. But we're gonna, just going to pull over here and uh, just give you a, a little, uh, little view of what we've got. absolutely beautiful here's a few bikers but that's kind of like what I don't like to see people riding around in a vest I've seen people in your shorts come on guys it's just absolutely stupid why would you want to lose your skin like I said, we've come out, we've got, uh, I've got Amy here. We've both got the same Dainese boots that are kind of uh, very sort of uh, vented. And um, we've got the jackets with the armors and the back protector and the shoulders. And we've also uh, both got uh, Kevlar jeans in. I'll, uh, we've also bought our own helmets out as well and gloves. Um, and uh, we've got the Senna comms kit as well. I'm just going to see if I can connect her helmet in a minute. Hi. Hello. How are you so how are you finding it on the back of the uh, the Royal Enfield? It's the first time for you on the back of one of these bikes. Is it comfortable? It's really comfortable. Yes, I do like it. Um, I didn't think there was going to be much room, and the seat didn't look great. But I've, um, no, it's, it's all good. Yeah, I was surprised, surprised really, because I've seen a few a few people uh, say that the seat's uh, a bit uncomfortable in a few reviews and things like that. But I'll be honest, I don't find that a problem. Um, yeah, maybe if I kept the bike and you'd want to try something else. But um, for me personally, I don't find that uncomfortable at all. Um, there's, there's plenty of space on there for both of us as well. Um, what, what, how are you finding it for kind of viewing really? Because... Um, Obviously, normally, sometimes you're kind of sat up a bit higher than me when we've been on the touring bikes and things, but uh, can you see, or are you just staring at the back of my helmet? No, I can see. Um, obviously, you are in front of me, but I know I've still got a good view of everything on the road ahead. Yeah, I think all in all, I mean, um, 
I kind of I'm not quite sure what this preload set on the suspension but I don't find the suspension a problem again I think if if it was a bike that I was owned or if, if it's a bike that I owned I would probably upgrade it and um, for something a little bit more plusher um, but all in all I'm happy with this it's um, it's an enjoyable ride um, like I said you don't you don't feel like you want to sort of rag it you just kind of get on it and and enjoy it I mean price point under six thousand pounds i think these are in fact this is the 2019 model they don't really change them much between the years i think they bought them out in 2018 and um so this bike has probably done a few miles uh, being a rental let's have a little look so on here this is in kilometers we've got twenty thousand and ninety four point five kilometers so um that's in pretty good shape I mean you can see just in the in the tank and the finish you can see me but I think overall I mean there's a little bit of tarnish in there but I think that would probably polish up but I mean even the exhaust the bike is in fantastic condition right okay let's press on and uh, find out what the brakes are like so yeah, as I'm, as I'm getting on the brakes a little bit on the descents, I'm not finding a problem with it. Yes, it's not a set of like style emers. It's single disc, but all in all, I'm just giving a giving that back brake a little uh, press, and yeah, it's kind of doing its job. So I noticed on some of the bikes, some of the upgrades that they've been doing. Um, have been like uh, replacement mirrors but I'll be honest these these mirrors are again doing the job um, they're not vibrating and rattling around they they look part of the bike I don't think I'd change them to be honest they're doing their job they suit the character of the bike as do the kind of analog clocks and the rev counter and the speed air there from the the digital mileage and the the fuel gauge what more do you need I mean, look at the landscape back there. It just looks like you're on a, another planet. Okay, not sure what's going off here. There's bus. A, another bus coming the other oh, way. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do the cheeky thing and try and squeeze past. It's the beauty of the bikes. So I just saw a Royal Enfield Himalayan back there parked up. And um, it's a bike I shall be riding this August in the Himalayas. So if you've not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do because uh, we're going to get some really good footage of that ride. Two weeks riding round at 18,500 feet. It's going to be spectacular. So I think Royal Enfield was claiming that this bike can do about 70 to the gallon. I don't think that's true. Uh, it's probably more like 60 or maybe slightly less. 50 to 180 miles to a tank is a, a pretty, pretty decent return. Um, and I don't think you're gonna have to worry about running out of fuel. So yeah, I'm just having a bit of a bit of a solo ride, and I've got to say, this bike it does handle pretty good. You can really sort of, sort of lean in it over. So I've got to say, guys. I have had a fantastic day on this Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 today. It's just handled these roads perfectly, and. If I had to add another bike into my collection today, I think it would be this one. Value for money, pound for pound, this bike is absolutely superb. So, hope you like the video, guys. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Give us a like, and I'll see you in the next one.